All right, so this talk is really about a way to protect your sensitive information, and we're gonna, there's really a, a couple ways to do it. You can protect your sensitive information by deleting it, removing PII, personally identifying information from the data sets where it's not actually required, just remove it completely. The other way to, um, but it turns out there are sometimes that we actually wanna be able to join based on things that are potentially um, PII. And sometimes it's not a field that's PII, but the combination of fields, right? So a zip code by itself isn't PII. It's not, it doesn't identify you in any way. But a zip code tied to your phone number uh, might be enough to identify you using other data sets, right? So that might be a PII combination. What we're talking about doing here is actually obfuscating, and by obfuscating, I don't mean in a easily reversible fashion, but obfuscating the PII fields and because we might want to be able to join across zip codes. Um, so I'm going to use this one as an example here. In this case, I've got an account and I've got a bunch of notifications, right? That went out maybe to phone numbers and they might not be bound to um, account. They might just be a bunch of notifications we send out about a different thing. They could be marketing, they could be something else. And I want to be able to join from those accounts over to those notifications to find out what notifications went to that account. So, what we can do is we can replace the phone number and the zip code with tokens. Um, we could do field level encryption and then use the same encryption key everywhere. The other option is just to use a token. So we're going to talk about using a token store and wherever we see this phone number, we're going to replace it with the same token. So in this one here, you can see my um, 87653.09 is actually this account A1234. You can see we've obfuscated it. And then down in the notification table here, we actually took the same 87653.09, and no, I can't sing it. Um, and we obfuscated it, we tokenized it in that table with the exact same token value. And that way, when we join these data sets, we don't actually have any sensitive information that can be used in case of data breach or by internal users maliciously or by accident. Um, but we can still join to that and we can see that account A1234 actually had three notifications go out. When we obfuscate, we actually need to know the meaning of the field so that they can join again, right? So a phone number field in the tokenization service or tokenization entity would have basically a map for phone numbers tied to tokens, right? There would be a zip code map for uh, zip codes tied to tokens. For street addresses, we might actually do it. And for cities, each field that has the same meaning, it might not have the same business meaning, but it represents the same thing, right? So a notification phone number and a business phone number and a, and a personal um, something else phone number, right? Um, device phone number, those are all phone numbers. They may not have the same meaning in your system, kind of like mailing address and shipping and uh, purchase address and all and uh, garage address for car insurance, right? They're still addresses. So we're going to have the same token. So here we have a, like I said, we have a phone map and a zip code map. And everywhere when somebody wants to tokenize a zip, they basically go to some to service or whatever, and they pass a zip code and they say, this is for the zip field. And the zip map will be referenced to make that happen. And same for the phone number and the same for street address. The only other thing, one other thing I wanted to call out here, you can actually do some performance boosting here. There is a limited scope of phone numbers and there is a limited number of zip codes and there's a limited number of zip code plus four actually. Big data is cheap, disk drives are cheap. You could easily generate the entire token map for, cert for certain namespaces without any big deal. So like for phones and zips, you could do that. Kind of like a rainbow table. For street addresses, there might be an unlimited. So in that case, you may end up having to create tokens on the fly as they're needed. Um, and in some cases, if the, you may end up actually having to like, maybe make the street address be all capitals when it's stored in the token table. So that way capitalization doesn't bite you. There's other things you can do there. So the key here is what we wanna do is eliminate PII data while still making it joinable. And you can see the tokens actually only have to be unique within a certain map. So you can actually reuse tokens across map. Nobody is gonna try and join, we hope, a street address against a phone number, right? So if the token for a street address and the token for a phone number are the same, it's not a big deal. A token has value within the scope of the attribute that it's used for. So how would we actually implement this? 
Um, you can do it a couple ways, right? I'm gonna kind of give you, in this case, I'm gonna assume that our data lake and our data warehouse and our customer 360 store or whatever we're working on, um, I've worked two places where we were using graph stores for customer 360 now, or at least it was proposed. Um, the simplest way to do this, there's two ways. One is the producers can do this, right? Everywhere we they deal with data, before they start doing transforms, they actually just tokenize it before putting it into the pipeline. That'd be one way to do it. Like in ETL pipelines, we're into event streams. The other way to do it is to put a single choke point in front of these large data stores and actually tokenize them there. And in that case, we would rely on a metadata catalog. Uh, we'd have some catalog that says this schema has these PII fields with these attribute names, and we would be able to use those in the tokenization process to actually figure out which maps we would end up being bound to, right? Is it the zip? Is it the phone number? Is it an address? Is it an account number? The key to making this work securely, right? So once the, if the data is tokenized and you have a breach, you're, you probably don't have a problem if you lost a single data set. Um, but we really need to protect the tokenizing service. And I'm going to propose here that you create a REST service and this REST service can take one or more records um, and, the, at, and it basically accepts the attribute name as in the catalog, as in what the map name is, and then a value, and it will return back the um, actual tokenized value. We can, we can also do use this for REST services, for other applications, right? There may be a lot of cases where in our operational stores, we don't want to keep PII. So in that case, when the user enters PII or enters an address or something, Basically, we would just tokenize that immediately and then put the tokenized value in the operational store. And then when that went to the lake, we wouldn't actually have to retokenize, right? I hope this is helpful for you and protect your PII.